And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Father, we do thank you for our workers, our leaders, our pastors, our overseers, everyone present. We're asking, oh Lord, that tonight you open our eyes once again to see the calling and the commission you are giving us. And we pray, Lord, that you energize, empower everyone, at least and engage everyone, encourage your people, Lord, that everyone will move forward in this great assignment you have given us, and this work will prosper in our hands. Everyone will succeed in Jesus' name. Drive tiredness away. And we pray that you grant us fresh vision to do exploits for the Lord. Confirm it in every life, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. We're coming to Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. We're reading from verses 28 and 29. Joel chapter 2. Verse 28, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see vision. And also upon my servants and upon my handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. There we find prophecy. Not only prophecy, there we find the promise of God. It is the promise of the outpouring of the spirit. And it is for the whole church. And the purpose is defined very clearly. The reason why the outpouring of the Spirit is coming upon all flesh, upon our sons, upon our daughters, upon the men and upon the women, upon the young and upon the old, is that we will proclaim the truth of God. Prophesy the truth of God. Declare the truth of God teach and preach the truth of God. And then he tells us what the result will be. Look at verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. That is when we proclaim the word of God according to the prophecy. It says there will be good response. And the good response is people will call on the name of the Lord for their needs and the Lord will meet their needs. We find the fulfillment of this in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat on each of them, everyone. And it says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Then, as you know the whole story already, the people gathered together, and they were surprised at what they were hearing and what they were seeing. It was then that the Lord moved Peter to rise up and he tells us as he told them in verse 16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days. Look at that. It shall come to pass in the last days, says God. I will pour out of my spirit upon how many people? all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young we your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams look at verse 18 and on my servants and on my handmaidens i will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy what's the result of that verse 21 and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved as we look at uh, those references we have read both in joel and the confirmation we find in the acts of the apostles chapter 2 you find the outpouring of the holy ghost promised unto the whole church 
the young and the old the old church the old church that is uh, the men and the women is the whole church members and ministers are promised the baptism the immersion the empowerment and the endowment of the holy ghost for the purpose of preaching please understand the purpose why the spirit of god was poured out the purpose why the prophecy was given the purpose why the holy ghost came in baptismal measure upon the men and the women upon the young and the old upon the old men and the young people is for the preaching of the gospel acts of the apostles chapter 1 verse 8 Acts chapter 1 verse 8 But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you Wait there for a moment that you there all flesh The men and the women, the young and the old The aged ones and the elderly ones, everyone And it says and ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you men, come upon you women, come upon you children, come upon your sons and daughters. And it tells us the purpose. And it says, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. We understand then the outpouring of the Spirit of God came upon the men and the women and upon the young and the old for the purpose that they will proclaim that Jesus Christ is Savior, that Jesus Christ is Lord, that Jesus Christ is the one that has given himself as a final sacrifice for the redemption of the whole of humanity. And it says that will be done in Jerusalem, men and women, young and old. That will be done in all Judea, men and women and the young and old. That will be done in Samaria, men and women and uh, and the young and the old and then it says to the uttermost part of the earth and this particularly now is talking about this generation because it says come back to chapter 2 verse 17 chapter 2 verse 17 and it shall come to pass in the last days in the last days these are those days in the last days and you understand the prophecies given about the last days all the other sections of this generation they are fulfilling that prophecy it says in the last days there will be perilous times it says men shall be lovers of themselves they are and it says that men will love pleasures more than they love God and the due. And it says that men will be religious but they will not be righteous. They will deny the power of godliness and the due. It's now for the church to fulfill its part that the Lord had said in the last days I put my spirit upon all flesh. And when I do that I'm going to do it for the men and for the women and for everyone. Come to that verse 17 again. And it shall come to pass in the last days says God I will pour out of my spirit upon tell me those two words there tell me out loud upon all flesh upon all flesh and you see the significance of that as you come to Luke chapter 3 verse 6 Luke chapter 3 verse 6 all flesh all flesh will receive of the spirit of god all flesh will receive of this outpouring and this endowment and this empowerment it tells us in luke chapter 3 verse 6 it says and all flesh shall see the salvation of god everybody can we say that together and all flesh shall see the salvation of god can we say that aloud and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Look up here. All flesh in the church. All flesh in the kingdom. All flesh of those who have given their lives to the Lord. I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. And it is for the purpose of preaching, proclamation, declaring the truth of God. And all flesh in the world. If all flesh in the church receive the outpouring of the spirit of God. Then all flesh in the world will see the salvation of the Lord. They will understand that. Christ is Savior. They will understand that there's nothing else you need to do now to be saved, but to repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. All flesh here within the church, all flesh there outside the church, you link them together, and all flesh shall see the salvation of the Lord. But 
if all flesh in the church is not faithful to God, if all flesh in the church is not receiving of that endowment, that empowerment, if all flesh in the church is not having the endowment of power, the immersion in the spirit of God, the baptism in the Holy Ghost, and if they are baptized in the Holy Ghost, but only part of them is actually doing the thing they were baptized for, then it's going to affect the world, all flesh in the world will not have that thing the Lord wanted them to have. We're looking at John chapter 17. John chapter 17, and we're reading from verse 2. John chapter 17, we're reading here from verse 2. As thou hast given him power over how many people? All flesh. You have given him power over all flesh. That means you've given him authority over all flesh. You've given him the assignment, the commission to die and to make atonement for the whole world. You've given him power and authority over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. If all flesh in the church will receive the power of God, the men and the women, the young and the old, and then they will do what the Lord has called them to do we're going to find out that more people in the world will hear more people in the world will receive more people in the world will understand that their salvation is for them repentance is for everyone Redemption is for everyone. Salvation is for everyone. Healing is for everyone. Sanctification is for everyone. There's nobody that will say that as we are in the church that only the men will be sanctified, only the older ones will be sanctified, only the parents will be sanctified. The salvation and the sanctification we have for the parents and we have for the men and we have for the women and we have for the children and we have for everyone in the church and then the baptism in the Holy Ghost the same thing that baptism in the Holy Ghost that endowment of power is for everyone in the church everyone that is born again everyone that has uh, the life of Christ in them that baptism is for them I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh the privilege of prayer that's for everyone who cannot only men can pray only women can pray and the privilege of the power of right righteousness inheritance in heaven everything provided for all number one for children number two for youth number three for women number four for men number five for everyone and obedience to the gospel is for everyone faithfulness to the lord that's for everyone the love of god and the love of our neighbors that's for everyone compassion for the lost is for everyone doing good at a level that is whatever level you are if you're an angel angels are supposed to do good if you are a man men are supposed to do good if you are old you are supposed to do good if you're a woman you are supposed to do good if you're a child at your level you're supposed to do good if you're a youth at your level you're supposed to do good protecting others from danger and eternal suffering is expected of all from children from youths, from women, and from men. I'm talking to you today on the mission of Christ's Spirit-filled church. The mission of Christ's Spirit-filled church. We're talking about the whole church. It's not only the pastors that make up the church. They are part of the church. It's not only the adults that make up the church. They are part of the church. It's not only the youths that make up the church. They are part of the church. It's not just children that make up the church. They are part of the church. And it's not only men that make up the church. They are part of the church. And women too are part of the church. We're talking of the whole church. That the whole church have been access to salvation. The whole church having access to sanctification. The whole church having access to the baptism in the Holy Ghost. The whole church having access to all the promises of God. And this is the whole church that God promised. I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh. 
And when I pour my spirit upon all flesh, this is what they will do. They will prophesy, they will see visions, they will dream dreams, and they will do the work of the Lord. They will be witnesses unto me. The message today, uh, the mission of Christ, uh, of Christ's uh, spirit-filled uh, church, is divided to three parts. Part one, concerning the youths. Part two, concerning the women. Part three, concerning the men. Part one, the express, explicit, explicit promise to young witnesses. The express, explicit promise to young witnesses. The youths, the witnesses, not just the teachers, not just the supervisors, not just the leaders, not just the people who are directing them, the youths themselves. God has given a promise, and that promise is expressed, and that promise is explicit. Point number two, the evangelistic participation of yielded women. The evangelistic participation of yielded women. Because the women too, they receive of the Spirit of God for a purpose. And the purpose is that they'll be witnesses unto me. Anyone receiving the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Anyone uh, tapping into the overflowing of the outpouring of the Spirit of God. There is but one goal. There is but one reason. There is but one purpose. And it is to witness of Christ and to declare who Christ Christ is to the community and to everyone. Point number two, then the evangelistic participation of yielded women. Point number three, the extraordinary productivity in yonder work. Yonder work. The extraordinary productivity in yonder work. That is, the men have to rise up and go beyond their territory beyond their comfort zone beyond their familiar ground and go yonder because it is in going yonder that you actually do exploits for the lord and so you have point number three the extraordinary productivity or in yonder what well, tell me number one there The express explicit promise to young witnesses. We're going back to Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. And I want you to notice here what concerns the youth. I want you to notice the promise of God here. It tells us in Joel chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 28. It says, and it shall come to pass afterward. It shall come to pass afterward. Stop there for a moment afterward. That means that even if this had never happened, even if you don't see any example in the Old Testament, this is the future. And the future is now. This is what God was saying. This is going to happen in the future. It shall come to pass afterward. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That never happened before this time. Only on some few people. An Elijah, an Elisha, a Moses, a Joshua. And the individuals that received the spirit of God. God in part, partially at that time. That's why Moses said that he would, that he prayed that God will pour his spirit upon all flesh. It had not happened then. But now God was saying a future time was coming. A future generation was coming that he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters, what will they do? Tell me out loud. Your sons and your daughters, the young people, you see that any, any child that is old enough to repent is old enough to get saved. Any child that is old enough to receive the truth of salvation is old enough to receive the promise of God's love. Any child that is old enough to understand that Jesus died for humanity and jesus died for every sinner and jesus died for everyone that will call upon the name of the lord so they can be saved that child is old enough to repent he's old enough to receive salvation and he's old enough to tell another person of that salvation hold on look at a child they even the primary school children they are old enough to study 
study and to learn the many subjects they're learning at school and the message of salvation you can write in only one page about the fact that you know man has sinned man cannot save himself and jesus christ has come to save him and uh, he whosoever will call upon the name of the lord shall be saved a primary school child can understand that a primary school child should be able to learn that they learn things they memorize things that will run to pages and then they come out and they recite them they do drama and they do recitation and they do writing and they answer questions and many questions they answer they are more difficult than a simple gospel message and so God said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon your sons and upon your daughters. Those children, when their parents are sick, they care for them. They are old enough to care. Those children, they are old enough to get concerned. Concerned if something is happening somewhere that they feel is going to endanger life, they can give us a lot. They are old enough to use their telephone. They are old enough to be able to call our attention to something. They are old enough to even be prefects in schools and to be able to direct the assembly. If they are old enough to do that, the Lord said, "I'm going to pour my spirit upon all." All flesh and your sons and your daughters they're going to prophesy the promise is for young believers the privilege and responsibility too is for young believers children can be saved can i have a good amen yeah. children can be sanctified can i have a good amen yeah. and then here we have the promise and the privilege children can be filled with the holy ghost we're not, we're not even talking about secondary school children. Look at what secondary school children can do. And those secondary school children, they can do good and they can do something not so very good too. If they want to stop all the, all the teaching and lessons at school, they can mobilize themselves. If they want to kind of do any evil thing to a teacher that they don't like, they can talk to themselves convincingly and do that. If they want to close up the school they can talk they are so energetic and they are so intelligent and they can talk convincingly almost like politicians and close up the school if they wanted to and not only that on the good side look at all the good good lessons and the subjects they are learning and they are able to learn all those lessons and retain everything what the average teenager can retain in knowledge will be very difficult for older 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 people to retain and understand Understand. If they can do that, then they can preach the gospel. I said they can preach the gospel. If that's, you read the New Testament, uh, the New Testament is not as difficult as the Shakespeare they are reading, as the literature they are reading, and the New Testament they are reading is not as difficult as all the conjugations they make in English language, as all the precis they have to do, as all the questions they have to answer in the English language, all the geography, all the history, all the civics, and all the home economics they learn, they are more difficult than what you read on the pages of gospel according to saint john look at the language of the gospel according to saint john for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life look at the vocabulary there god one label so one label world so label love the world is one label and it's it's easier than many of the chemistry equations they have to balance it's easier than many of the mathematics things they have to do and all the physics they have to go through the bible is actually easier and the message of the gospel is for the young people once they receive that gospel and have experienced it they have tasted it they also now they have the power of the holy ghost and they go to reach out with the gospel they can do it and they will do it we're going to tell them this is your work this is their work how can they do that number one they can reach siblings of the same 
parents, siblings, brothers and sisters of the same parents. That's not difficult. Not only that, number two, they can talk to their parents. They know how to get things out of their parents. They know how to make their, how to make their parents take some decisions. The decisions for eternal life, the decision to get to heaven, those children should be able to do that. Their young relations, young relations, cousin, uncle, uh, fellow um, relations, they can talk to them too and show them the way of the gospel they can talk to their playmates they play together and they know the rules of the game now they must know the rule of getting to heaven and they must understand how we repent they must understand how we believe they must understand how we make covenant of the lord so we can be saved tell me some of these children those who have not come to the lord they know how to make covenant with satan and they know how to bring other children to make covenant with satan they know how to you know threaten them with judgment and they know how to kind of invite them with some carrots and with some uh, things that those children want if they can do that for the devil they can do this for christ and they can invite their playmates they have friends they can talk to their friends about salvation because god said i'm pouring out my spirit upon your sons upon your daughters so that they will prophesy they will proclaim they will preach and they can talk to their schoolmates and classmates and their helpers and carers at home they, they have carers at home they have helpers at home they have maids at home and these and they are more familiar than their parents with these uh, carers and the helpers not only that there are orphans they should have pity on orphans their parents they have care they have money they have quite a lot of things provisions for them and they can talk to their neighbors too and they have contacts many contacts they have they have contacts here in the community they have contacts in other countries they have contacts on their phone they use social media and therefore these young people the gospel is with them and once the gospel is with them the means of spreading that gospel is also with them they have inquirers and seekers and these people they can reach out to they reach them with the gospel because that's what god said that when the spirit of god comes upon your sons and your daughters they shall prophesy they will in jesus name acts of the apostles we are coming back to acts of the apostles and i'm reading from chapter 2 Acts chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 17 it says and it shall come to pass in the last days this especially for the last days and this especially for the days in which we are living it shall come to pass in the last days says God that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and now there are parents that will make their children to study and study academic subjects therefore education 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 they go to the regular school after coming back they have lessons for them to they have teachers for them and those children don't study any other thing but you know it's not just uh, you remember all work without play makes jack a dull boy all academics without any hobby without any uh, kind of openness to go and do some evangelism interact with the community everything is not going to help the child but to balance up the life of the child you're encouraging the child train up a child in the way he should go and when he's old or when he's older he will not depart from it yes academics then evangelism i said evangelism if you have not added that to the lives of your children add that and then our own school children the, the school outreach we're talking about success 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 yes success plus soul winning we're talking about education education with evangelism we're talking about making it in life god will permit your behead you'll not be the tail what happens to a dumb edge a head that is never talking a head that is never challenging all that's around that's not a head a head must be able to talk to others this is what god has done for me he can do the same for you too let's understand in a, look at verse 38 of that same chapter 2 and then peter said unto them repent 
and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive tell me the gift of the Holy Ghost but look at this for the promises unto you parents and to your tell me out loud and to your the children the youths that the children and the youth they're supposed to have the power of the holy ghost too and to all that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call when that happens when the young people receive the holy ghost the torch of the holy ghost the transformation of the holy ghost the triumph we have in the holy ghost what do they do acts chapter 1 verse 8 but you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth are there children in jerusalem they should talk to them are there children in judea the children who are born again should talk to them are there children in samaria those who are born again should talk to them are there children here in the uttermost part of the earth here in our city are there children on the streets are there children in the hospitals are there children and in the schools are there children in the neighborhood are there children in the marketplace are there children of course the children are there and those who have had the salvation of the lord and the holiness experience and now the baptism in the holy ghost they should be talking to the children look at the promise of god isaiah chapter 44 isaiah chapter 44 and i'm reading from verse 3 isaiah chapter 44 we're reading from verse 3 it tells us in Isaiah chapter 44 verse 3 for i will pour out water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground listen to this i will pour out my spirit upon who are those people upon the seed who are they I will put my spirit upon thy seed. You see, God had that intention. It's not only in Joel, it's not only in Acts chapter 2, that the children, thy seed, will have the Holy Spirit and my blessing upon thy offspring. Thy offspring, your children. We're looking at uh, Isaiah chapter 59, verse 21. 59, verse 21. In verse 21, as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord, my my spirit that is upon thee and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth nor tell me out of the mouth of thy seed as the parents are the men as the women are preaching the word of God the word of God is in our mouth it says the word of God is also in the mouth of our seed nor from the mouth of thy seed seed says the Lord from henceforth and forever from henceforth and forever that means then the word of God must be in the mouth of the parents and the children as uh, the parents are doing evangelism as the men and the women are doing evangelism the children too the youths too they're doing uh, evangelism they're reaching forth and they're reaching uh, out actually we look at um, Jeremiah now chapter 1 Jeremiah chapter 1 and i'm reading from verse 4 jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 uh, while we are opening jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 remember remember that uh, when moses was a baby and moses was put in a basket and on river nile at the shore of river nile it was miriam a child a child a teenager at that time uh, that stood by when the adults could not do that and when pharaoh's uh, daughter came and said this mother one of the children of the hebrew women immediately miriam came out and said can i go and find somebody for you that will take care of that a child for you and she said and she said go and miriam went to call who did she go to call the mother she was wise enough to do that if miriam could do that at the age of 12 and provide and protect a deliverer for the whole nation our children can do that our children can love our children can care our children can tell other people how they can be saved there was a mage that the syrians had gone out to take uh, during the time of war and this mage, just a teenage girl was in the house of Laman, but Naaman was 
a leper and then she observed that and nobody could tell them how the lepers will be cleansed but uh, the maid said why well, my master if my master will be with the prophet in uh, samaria he'll be cleansed of the leprosy from that word from that maid a young person they told uh, Naaman about that and then they told the king that's how Naaman eventually got cleansed from leprosy if those uh, children could do that at that time our children can talk for Jesus they can witness for them but we have to tell them we have to mobilize them we have to show them the scriptures that the spirit of God is coming upon them because of this uh, preaching of the gospel Jeremiah chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 4 then the word of the Lord came unto me saying behold before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee. And I ordained thee, prophet, unto the nations. Then said I, ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for, tell me. Now Jeremiah is not talking, but you know, we, the adults, are saying they cannot talk because they're children. We're saying that they cannot do it. We cannot make the young people to go and talk to young people. We cannot make the young people to go and witness to young people. We cannot make the young people to go and tell the young people like themselves that they ought to be born again. Because as Jeremiah said, we are saying for the Jeremiahs of today, the Samuels of today, that they cannot talk. Well, look at what God said but the Lord said in verse 7 unto me say not I am a child for thou shalt go children will go the youths will go the teenagers will go the college students university students, they will go for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee and whatsoever I command thee thou shalt speak be not afraid children might be afraid but do not be afraid of their faces for i am with thee to deliver the says the lord then the lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the lord said unto me behold i have put my words in thy mouth our teenagers god has put his word in their mouth our sons and our daughters God has put his word in their mouth our college students God has put his word in their mouths our university students God has put his word in their mouths and the word will not die in their mouth the word will not be buried in their mouth but the word will come forth the word will come out the word of salvation will come from the sons and the daughters and they will prophesy they will declare the word of the lord in jesus name and look at uh, verse 10 see i have this this said thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out he's talking to jeremiah a child and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant moreover the word of the lord came unto me saying jeremiah what seest thou it wasn't god talking to another person and then to go and tell jeremiah god was talking to jeremiah directly god will talk to our children and god will talk to our youths and they will be bold and they will declare the word of god with the power of the spirit of god in jesus name and we adults we will not hinder them we will not discourage them we will not stop them we will not say uh -uh, this is not your area is for the whole church to take the whole the whole world to the whole world and i said i see a rod of an almond tree verse 12 then said the lord unto me thou hast well seen for i will hasten my word to perform it he will hasten his word it will be performed in jesus name we're coming to point number two now point number two the evangelistic participation of yielded women we're coming back to joel chapter 2 joel chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 28 joel chapter 2 verse 28 and it shall come to pass afterward that i will pour out of my spirit upon tell me i can't hear you i want to hear you more upon all flesh and your sons and your and your sons and your 
the daughters are those males or females females women shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions and upon also upon my servants and upon thee tell me handmaids in those days will i pour out my spirit handmaids handmaids handmaidens or handmaids the same thing those are women those are women that have yielded their lives to the, to the lord those are women that have submitted absolutely unto the lord and now it says they're my hand and there your daughters are taking them we're coming to acts of the apostles acts of the apostles we're looking at uh, chapter 2 acts of the apostles chapter 2 and we're reading from verse uh, 16 acts of the apostles chapter 2 reading from verse 16 in verse 16 it says but this is that which was spoken by joel by the prophet joel and it shall come to pass when it shall come to pass when the days in which we're living now what kind of days are we going to call this these are the last days these are the last days and so we're not going to say did it happen in uh, judges uh -uh, that's not the question did it happen in uh, joshua that's not the question did it happen in first samuel that's not the question because it shall come to pass in the last days in fact some people might say did it happen in the acts of the apostles of course it happened even if it did not happen because in the last days and these are the last hours of the last days prophetically and the lord said and it shall come to pass in the last days says god i will pour out of my spirit upon tell me again all flesh and your sons and uh, your daughters shall prophesy and your sons and your daughters shall tell me prophesy what does that mean they'll declare the might of god to their communities to prophesy what does that mean they will reveal the revelation they have got from the word of god from the from the living word and from the reaching word they'll declare that to their neighborhoods they shall prophesy it goes on to say and you and the young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and upon my servants and upon my tell me handmaidens my handmaidens have taken hold of them i've saved them i've possessed them i've claimed them i've adopted them they are now mine and they are they're not resisting me they have yielded unto me that's what we say this is for yielded women and it goes on to say i will pour in those days i'll pour my spirit upon them and they shall those daughters they shall those handmaidens they shall prophesy look up here for a moment you understand once something has not been done before and it is it wasn't the regular thing that's the problem of the pharisees and the sadducees jesus christ came on the sabbath day he healed the sick they were looking at one another show me where that happened in history Show me where that happened 400 years ago. Show me where that happened. A tradition. This man, they were referring to Jesus Christ, is going to trample upon a tradition. It's going to disrupt and disorganize a tradition. That's the reason they rejected him because they didn't understand it was a new day it was a new era the same thing god is saying here we can see from the word of god it says it shall come to pass in the last days i will pour my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy upon my servants upon my handmaidens i will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy and there's some people that will say that did not happen 10 years ago five years ago three years ago if it is happening now then we want to kick against it you don't want to kick against that because this is God's revelation for the last days it will happen in our midst it will continue in Jesus name and then look at this chapter 1 verse 8 but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me what's the purpose of having the Holy Ghost baptism to be witnesses unto him where in jerusalem headquarters and in judea at the suburbs 
and in Samaria going further and to the uttermost part of the earth everywhere men and women can evangelize men and women can witness unto the lord jesus christ that he is savior it says shall receive power look at verse 14 these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication what were they praying for for the power of the holy ghost for the baptism in the holy ghost and then he goes on to say in that verse 14 with the with the and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. So you understand, all of them, the men and the women, they were waiting for the fulfillment of the promise of Christ that both men and women would be baptized, immersed, empowered by the Holy Ghost. And did it happen? Look at this in verse, uh, we we're looking at it from verse 1 of uh, X, that is uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They are the only men who are they, men and women. And it says, Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they where they where they were sitting. Who are those they? men and women and they appeared unto them who are the them men and women unto them clothing tongues like as of fire and it sat on each of them sat on each of them who are the them over here men and women look at verse 4 and they were all filled who are the they the men and the women and they were all filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them them utterance them who are they there look at verse 11 greeks and arabians we do hear them who are these them men and women who are baptized in the holy ghost we hear them men and women speak in our tongue what were they speaking the wonderful works of god men and women men and women and all those at the crowd they were hearing before peter rose up and told them this is that which was prophesied by by a joel the prophet let's see some examples we're looking at luke chapter 2 luke chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 36 luke chapter 2 verse 36 are you there luke chapter 2 i'm waiting Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2. What verse are you looking for? Have you got it in my Bible? I said, did you get it in my Bible? You got it in yours there. Luke chapter 2, verse 36. And there was one Anna. Is that a man? Tell me. And there was one Anna, a woman, a prophetess, daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Aser. She, a woman, was of great age, and she had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about four score and four, ye four years. Four score and four, what's that? Eighty-four years, which uh, departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. Verse 38 now, and she coming in that instant give thanks likewise unto the lord and you tell me go on and speak one two three go a woman and speak of him to all them that looked for redemption in jerusalem a woman having the spirit of God Christ now had been born. The Savior had now come. And so she spoke unto them the good things of the Lord. And let's see what we learned this recently. Uh, John chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 28. John chapter 4, verse 28. This woman we're talking about not just got saved. She had not been sanctified. This woman had not um, been baptized in the Holy Ghost now, but just say born again, new convert woman. And we're told in John chapter 4, verse 28, the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and says unto the men, Come, come, 
see a man which told me all things that ever I did is not this the Christ then they went out of the city and came unto him she did that and brought many people unto Christ did Christ condemn that the Christ said uh-uh you made a mistake you shouldn't have done that and then these, uh, when these people came, uh, they said the Lord should stay with them. And they listened for a few days again. Now they told the woman, we're looking at it from verse 40. So when the Samaritans were come uh, unto him, they besought him that he would not, that he would tarry with them. Uh, and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. And said unto the woman, now we believe. Now we believe. She was the one that brought them and all they heard from Jesus directly and they said now we believe not because of thy sin for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ the Savior of the world it happened then it's happening now it will continue to happen we're looking at Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 28, Matthew chapter 28, I'm reading from verse 5. Matthew chapter 28, we're reading from verse 5. And the angel answered and said unto the women, the angel answered and said unto who? Amen. Tell me out loud. Amen. If you believe it, say it again. Amen. Said unto the women, fear, ye, fear not ye. For I know that you see Jesus, which was crucified, he is not here. For he is risen, as he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly, who are these people to go? And go quickly, who are these people going? And go quickly and tell his disciples. Who are these people? I said, who are these people? they were to tell about jesus that's evangelism that's assurance he's not dead again he's risen from the dead and because he's risen from the dead he gives us life and the angel said go tell his disciples he's risen from the dead and behold he goeth before you into galilee and there shall you see him and lo i have told you and they departed who are the day women and they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples what verse 9 and as they went who are this day women and as they went to tell his disciples behold behold Jesus met who the women behold jesus made them sin all hail and they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him then jesus said unto them unto them who women be not afraid go tell go tell go tell my brethren that they go into galilee and there they shall see me so that means then the lord is saying just tell them that there's jesus tell them jesus is savior tell them jesus is risen there's no crime in that in fact he compels us in fact he tells the women and the angels told the women go tell his disciples and go tell everyone that is not sure of his resurrection is not sure that he's risen from the dead so that he can raise us up to you from the dead go tell them that jesus christ is risen we will do it our women will do it in jesus name and we'll give all the encouragement all the support and within the program uh, we're planning we're going to keep on doing that in jesus name we're looking at philippians chapter 4 i'm looking at verse 3 philippians chapter 4 we're looking at verse 3 philippians chapter verse three. and i entreat i treat thee also through your fellow help those women don't hinder them help those women support them help those women encourage them 
help those women, remind them, help those women which labored with me, how? In the kitchen, in the tent making. Here Paul was saying, there's some women helping me. You know, I do tent making, I do preaching. They cannot preach, but they can help me bring the rope there, bring the step there, bring that tent there, help me carry this, help me carry that. Is that what was saying? No. Yes, we can do sanitation. Great. Yes, we can do the tent for retreat. Wonderful. Yes, we can clean the benches and the chairs. Wonderful. But you know, that's, that's, we can go beyond that. We can preach the gospel. We can evangelize. We can tell the people that have not known that Jesus Christ is Savior. All our women will get involved. It says in that verse 3, I entreat thee also through your fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. If you are sure your names are in the book of life, then you rise up and you unite with the people of God. We are going to do this together in Jesus' name. The Holy Ghost was promised and the Holy Ghost was given to Christian women for the purpose of witnessing, for the purpose of soul winning for the purpose of evangelization while christian women were not appointed pastors in the new testament we understand that we understand that they were anointed they were assigned and they were empowered they were engaged to evangelize and to teach women and youths and children and so even though they are not pastors over churches they are not overseers over a whole region they are not overseers over a whole state but they are assigned to preach the gospel assigned and appointed to preach the word of God and to evangelize there are millions of girls in our streets there are millions of women in our towns there are millions of widows in our communities there are millions of orphans in our country there are millions of single mothers all around us there are millions of aged old men old people that nobody is taking care of and there are millions of friends and relations and students and sick people millions of helpless homeless people millions of prisoners and hospital inmates millions of sick and ignorant villagers millions of village neighbors and neighborhoods that are to be rich and evangelized and women have a great part in reaching them and they're going to reach them i said they're going to reach them each Christian woman, not only women leaders, not only women leaders, not only women preachers, but all the Christian women, each Christian woman can and must get involved in appropriate kinds of evangelism. There are many kinds of evangelism. If you cannot do this, you can do that. If you cannot do that, you can do this other one. Number one, there is a personal evangelism. That is one on one. A woman can talk to another woman in the market, in the bus, at school, in the office, anywhere you find yourself. Point number two, friendship evangelism. Friendship evangelism. If anybody has uh, friends, women have friends. And those uh, contacts and friends, you talk to them about the Lord. Because there is friendship evangelism. Talk to your friend. You don't want your friend to perish. When you know there's something good they are selling in the market, how much did you buy this? I bought it for this. Uh -uh, my friend, how did you buy it like that? If you go to such and such a place, such and such a place, you are going to find it at half price. Uh huh. My sister, if you can say that to your friend, tell them to you. How did you get here? I went to, you know, one uh, man somewhere and robbed me. How do you do that? There is Jesus. Jesus is Savior and Jesus is Healer. We introduce them to Jesus and they will come in Jesus' name. Number three three there's care evangelism somebody is sick over there go there knock at every door what did you come to do i just came to find out if anybody is sick if anybody has problem number one i'm a christian number two i'm a nurse number three i know how to care and i care for people and i do it free of charge and as you care you also tell them gospel number four is literature evangelism literature evangelism women will do that and those of us who are women in this church everyone hearing the sound of my voice now you will do it 
And then number five, we have neighborhood evangelism. Look at all your neighborhood. And then your neighbor, they know you go in, you come out, and they know you as uh, a deeper life, a sister. They know you as, uh, they might even call you pastor, call you any name. And yet, you are not telling them. Uh, you rise up, you open your mouth, and you tell them in Jesus' name. That's what we call communal, communal evangelism. That is in the community. We come together like we have communal sowing, communal farming, communal whatever. Now we have communal evangelism. And we women over there, we come together and we say that this hour, this period, we're going to reach a community for the Lord. Number six, we have, um, number six, already it's number seven now, school, college evangelism. You're a teacher, you can do evangelism in that school. You're a student, a woman, a leader, you can do evangelism in that school. Number eight, market evangelism. A place where you sell. Even if you're not selling there, you can go there. You go to buy things there and you also go with your trash. You go with literature. You go with your mouth and the message and then you tell them to number nine, hospital evangelism. There are private clinics, there are government hospitals, they, they every, and they have open hours free hours when you can go in there and quite clear and wisely you introduce uh, those uh, inmates to the Lord Jesus Christ number 10 there is prisoner evangelism and there are women prisons that uh, men do not generally go to and you can go there the social media evangelism you can use your phone you can use your uh, iPad you can use your desktop you can use quite a lot of things email social media evangelism and as mass crusade evangelism where we gather people together in their hundreds in their thousands and here is a woman evangelist and is talking to them and bringing them to the lord and it's very simple it's just to say that all i've seen have come short of the glory of god you cannot save yourself but i want to introduce to you tonight jesus christ our savior whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be same and it will heal you too it will deliver you too it will set you free and i'm giving you that invitation now because whosoever whoever you are you come now and the gospel will reach you and you are going to be saved and they will be saved in jesus name we are saved to serve every woman is saved to serve we're sanctified to save the lost every woman is sanctified to save the lost we're baptized to bless others you are baptized in the holy ghost this is the purpose we're revived to, re to rescue the perishing we're born to reproduce therefore this is the time for you to consecrate yourself and to say i will do the will of god we will do it in jesus name we're coming to acts of the apostles chapter 8 acts of the apostles chapter 8 and i'm reading from verses 3 and 4 acts of the apostles chapter 8 verses 3 and 4 as for saul he made havoc of the church and entering into every house and healing men and tell me tell me out loud men and women committing them to prison therefore they that was scattered abroad who are they they the men and the women, the men and the women, all those men and the women that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and they say, Yes, now we are for Christ. So made havoc of the church and he went to every house he was looking for men and women he wasn't looking for men alone he persecuted both the men and the women and he said healing men and women committing them into prison he says therefore because those men and women were now running away from the persecution therefore the men and the women that were scattered abroad went everywhere what were they doing preaching the word the women were preaching the word everywhere they went personal evangelism mass evangelism community evangelism crusade evangelism it happened then it's going to happen now Amen. you will do it Amen. women i said you will do it Amen. nothing will stop you Amen. nothing will discourage you Amen. you'll be fruitful in jesus name Amen. We come to point number three, the extraordinary productivity 
in yonder work. The extraordinary responsibility, uh, productivity in yonder work. I want you to underline that word yonder, yonder. The farmer, the sower must go yonder, beyond his house before he can sow. The farmer must go yonder, beyond his territory, his familiar place of abode, before he can reap, before he can be fruitful. The fisherman must go yonder, before the, beyond the shore, before he can catch much fish. So, if you are just, uh, you know, in one place, I'm a pastor, I'm a pastor too, but we need to go yonder. I'm a leader, I'm a leader too, but we need to go yonder. I stay here, I minister here. I've been doing that too, but you need to go yonder. It is in the going yonder, beyond your familiar meeting place, that you can reach, you can evangelize, you can transform Jerusalem. And then you go yonder, beyond Jerusalem, you get to Judea. And then you go yonder, you go to Samaria. And then you go yonder to the uttermost parts of the city. Uttermost part of your local government. Uttermost part of your region. Uttermost part of your state. Uttermost part of your nation. We go yonder, beyond, and we're going to do exploits. Give me a good amen. I can't hear the voice of the men. You know, the men, the women are now saying amen for your behalf. Now only the men were going to go yonder in Jesus' name. We're looking at Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. We're looking at verse 28 and it shall come to pass afterward. That I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. And also upon my servants and upon my handmaids in those days, I will pour out my spirit. And then he tells us in verse 32, and it shall come to pass as we do what he has called us to do. As we go where he has sent us to go. As we proclaim the word he has planted, implanted in our hearts. As we prophesy, as the Holy Ghost is, uh, is pouring us, telling us to, to prophesy, it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Acts of the Apostles, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. The old men will have new dreams. A dream of where to go beyond our local territory. We're going to do greater than we have ever done. We're going to do exploits in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 16. But this is that which was spoken by Joel the prophet. And it shall come to pass in the last days, in the last days, in these last days, that I will pour out of my spirit up upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall not retire. And your old men shall not be dumb. And your old men shall not be tired. And your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit. And they shall, and they shall, and they shall prophesy. Verse 21, and it shall come to pass as they prophesy. And it shall come to pass as they preach. And it shall come to pass as they proclaim. And it shall come to pass as they dream, as they see visions, as they proclaim the name of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Somebody will be getting saved every day. You know, every day somebody is preaching, somebody is getting saved. Every day somebody is proclaiming the news, the good news of eternal life. Somebody is getting saved everywhere in Jesus' name. And let, let's remind ourselves of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But he shall receive power. We're not going to receive uh, fear. I said we're not going to receive fear. 
You know, there's some people you will see after they when they came to the meeting, they received fear. They received discouragement. You are seeing that they received darkness. You are seeing that they received, you know, something negative. But it says, as we come together like this, and then we pray, and we're going to pray, and heavens are going to be opened, and we're going to have the power of God in our lives in Jesus' name. And ye shall receive power. Make it personal. And I shall receive power. Say that again. Say that again. I will not receive timidity. I will not receive fear. I will not receive hindrance. I will not receive defeat. I shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. We're going to do it. Chapter 2, verse 39, for the promise is unto you. Hear you to hear for you tonight, the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call, as the Lord called you. This promise is for you, and this responsibility is for you. And with many other words, did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this unto a generation. Then did that gladly receive this word, were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. If we're preaching every day, God will be adding to the church every day. If we're witnessing and we're proclaiming the good news, evangelizing mass crusade, mass crusade taking place somewhere every day. And personal evangelism taking place somewhere every day. Literature evangelism going on every day. Or spiritual evangelism going on every day. Prison evangelism going on every day. Community evangelism going on every day. College evangelism going on every day. Men, women, evangelism going on every day. There'll be addition to the church every day. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Verse 47, praising God and having favor with all the people, with all the people. Some people are going to give us land. Some people are going to give us their houses. Some people are going to give us property to use for the growth and development and establishment of the church in Jesus' name. Because we're going to have favor with all people. Praising God and having favor with all, pe all the people. And the Lord added to the church, it will happen in your locality. And the Lord added to the church, it will happen in your district. And the Lord added to the church, it will happen in your school. And the Lord added to the church daily, daily, daily such as are being saved. Acts of the Apostles chapter uh, 4 I'm reading from verse 4 chapter 4 verse 4 how be each many of them which had the word believed and the number of the men was about 5,000 addition, addition is soon going to go to multiplication I'm reading from chapter 4 verse 31 and when they had preach the place was shaking you know, where they were assembled together and they were uh, and they were all filled with the holy ghost and they were all filled with the holy ghost and then he goes on and they speak the word of god with boldness they speak the word of god with boldness our time has come it's time to do extraordinary work for the Lord. And we're going to be part of this mighty team proclaiming the word of God everywhere in Jesus' name. Daniel chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 32. Daniel chapter 11 from verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall it corrupt by flatteries. While that is going on, uh, the things and uh, the lies in the world, the fraud in the world, the corruption in the world, the flatteries in the world, at that same time, in that same period, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits. Are there people here tonight? The people that do know their God. Where are you? The people that do know their God. We shall be strong. We shall not be weak. We shall not be fearful. 
we shall be courageous even though there is flattery in the world even though there is corruption in the world even though there is evil in the world while that is going on in the world in the last days in these last days the people that do know their god shall be strong and shall do exploits you receive power today Amen. anointing today Amen. unction today Amen. and endowment today and the Lord endows you tonight in Jesus' name. Arise and be strong. Arise and be strong. It is your time. These are the last days I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh. And it says your men, your women, your young men, your young women, your sons and your daughters, your, the servants and the handmaidens. I'll pour my spirit upon them. And this is the time for you and for me to be strong and for us to take this gospel everywhere. The youths have a part, the children have a part, the women have a part, the men have a part. Rise up, receive the power of the Lord, be strong and do exploits.